Oh, good morning. <laughs> it's day three. <laughs> Lost City Trek. Today we go to the Lost City. For real this time. For real, for real. Like, we're actually going to Ciudad Perdida. We've been going there the whole time, <laughs> but this time we're actually going to make it. Not because we didn't want to make it the other times, but because this time it was actually going to happen. We had to travel some trails, right? Yeah, we travel some trails, right? Kind of like what we're doing now. Holy smokes. All right, let's get into it. All right, we're on the trail and uh, got some beautiful waterfalls and our, all sorts of cool stuff. Um, it's starting off on the side of the river today. Had a wonderful breakfast. Um, some arepas and uh, I guess it was like some sausage and of course Colombian coffee. So we're gonna keep going and rocking today. steps where the ancient people went. Yes, the indigenous actually built these ages and ages ago, said to be even before Machu Picchu. Supposedly there's about 1,200 steps that were strategically placed here. Um, the Don't people- Don't skip glute day. Don't <laughs> skip glute day. Definitely not. Day. So we're gonna start, here's step number one. Here's what it looks like. There's step number one, two, three, four. We're not gonna count all of them, uh, but if you'd like to, start counting them. All right, they said that we've made it to the halfway point. The stairs are not getting easier, and it's getting steeper, and they're becoming more narrow. Pretty exciting, right? Yeah, it's exciting. Yeah. All right, here we go. <laughs> they just keep going. We made it to the top. This is the top. Almost there. Is this it? Is this it? Welcome to the National Park. <laughs> Gracias. like this name is metate so normally they use it for growing food same can normally we have it in home to grow in the garlic or the coriander so also at the same time the indigenous they have used this so normally they use it three artifacts like this one for food one for medicine and one for poison the poison they use it to also to paralyze the animal possible for them to eat and the archaeologists and the anthropologists they studied these stones and then normally they say one thing will represent 15 years use it. So almost these stones have it more than uh, eight fingers. Almost this stone calculate for them. Normally they have it like 400, um, 400 or 415 years with the families. They use it, this stone to grow in food or medicine or poison. Mm -hmm. But always the big, they use it for food.
helped you? You got me. <laughs> magical? This is so magical. The way the beautiful rock formations are, the way that the, the Kogis built their huts, and the way that they live is just so peacefully, one with earth. Like they don't even have beds or anything because they feel that they've got to sleep with the earth. I love it. I want to sleep in nature feel really inspired to just like live in the jungle. It's amazing. Look at this. These vines. Oh, watch out for the turd. 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 Sidewalk turd. Sidewalk turd. One day we did a romantic walk at the beach uh -huh. and I put some perfume on uh -huh. it. Yeah. I, had, I was tacked on my face. <laughs> on your face? <laughs> Several bites on my forehead. Always filming awkward moments. This place can we saw it, the big two center rings. They are the two important houses when the leader of the community, the Tayrona, and also the wife, they live in here. Normally in the community, the last place in Indiana they spend a life is when Indiana they use the very food inside in the house. In that place, never the archaeologists and the farmer they find any evidence can there be a tomb or buried down to the house. Because for the leader of the community, they not put the body. If they die, they not put in the same house. The leaders before died, they told to the community where they need to put and how specific they need to uh, put the body. Normally, the normal people they lay down for the indigenous always stand up, always in a special mountain or a special place when the leader they told and which the position of the body. So always the position looking to the sun. Adventure friends, Hi. we're uh, this might be a good spot. <sighs> we just had a lunch break and a dip, it was really nice. Yeah, so really nice. the last seat was really, really cool. The break was really nice, also and necessary, definitely yeah. necessary. Now we've got a three and a half hour hike back to well, down to camp number two. Um, and then tomorrow is day four, and we'll conclude this entire trip. It's pretty exciting. Yeah. We had such an amazing morning, so it was really, it was worth all the physical beatings, um, <laughs> but it was really beautiful, like the yeah, whole was. way there, and then Ciudad Perdido is just incredible. Oh my magic, gosh. Magic, magic. It's so totally magical. magic. Had a great time <laughs> meditating up there and everything too. Beautiful yeah. birds. Yeah, it was gorgeous. We'll tell you more in a bit. We gotta catch up to the group. So these gates are used to keep the animals in, keep the goats and the sheep. They're all about five poles high. Hi. Hey. We are having such a good time. We let everybody get ahead of us. We're not that far behind supposedly, mm -hmm. which is nice. Yeah. We had some fruit at the fruit station. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's quite refreshing knowing that we can kind of hold back and experience true quiet. Yeah. Like hearing this bamboo, like this bamboo back here, just rustle in the breeze, hearing yeah. the different birds. <laughs> And uh, occasionally we'll, we'll pass a hiker going towards the lost city. Yep. And uh, it's cool to see that they all turn up a smile and say, hola, buenas tardes, or buenos dias. And yep. everybody's having a good time, regardless of the pain that they're going yep. through. 
It's a good vibe. It's so cleansing. Like I just feel like a different human right now. Yeah. It's so nice. Yeah. All right, back to the trail. Good to see you though. Still cruising along. This uh, section of the hike is not that difficult per se. It's a lot of downhills, but it does uh, it does really wreak a little bit of havoc on your knees, on your thighs, on your glutes. Uh, so just know that whenever you come to see Dad Perdita, that you're gonna be walking a little bit, and it might hurt. But just like our boy, our mentor, our friend Les Brown says. The more difficult the road, the more beautiful the destination. And I gotta tell you that the destination on this hike has been absolutely gorgeous. What's your take on it? Yeah, pretty much every step has been amazing and totally worth the pain of the feet and back and pretty much every muscle in our bodies. Uh huh. Um, it's been really great. It's so beautiful. It's so quiet. Tranquilo. Tranquilo, tranquilo. Just nice to tune in with nature and check out of life for a minute. Yeah, so there's about 16 people in our uh, hiking group, including us two, so uh, 14 others. And uh, we've decided that we want to just hang back on most of these uh, hikes because the trail is very well marked, it's very well maintained, and uh, and we felt like you know it might be nice for us to to get out of the way sometimes and just do our own thing. And let me tell you that it has been so freaking nice yeah. this whole way so far. We uh, don't feel rushed. No, no, we don't feel rushed at all, which is awesome. I actually see them up ahead taking a break, so. We're going to go uh, maybe take a little break too. Uh, good night guys, so uh, how are you tonight? Yeah, All right. yeah. For tonight also that is special for us to integrate together and also we're going to share uh, some information about indigenous culture. So the name in here is Fermi and also Gragiel is my colleague, also you know it, Steve. And we're going to, he's going to start sharing with us about the culture when they live in here. We told about a little bit today and yesterday about the culture in here, but much better can he can explain for us about how they live in here and how Fermin is the leader of the community. It's not often we can have the team in here to integrate and <coughs> share with us some information can they going to explain for their history. So Fermin is the explain of the, the this guy. He's one important leader of the community. Buenas noches. Buenas noches. Bueno, entonces, bienvenidos todos en la Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. So welcome to all of you to hear the Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta. Eh, yo pertenezco a una cultura Scoggi, pero hay otra cultura más que Huiwa, Arhuaca y Tancuam. Y somos una cultura pacífica y espiritual. Cuidamos la Sierra Nevada de Santa Marta, que para nosotros representa el corazón o pulmón del mundo. I belong to the Yogi community, but there's some other ethnicities 
in Sierra Nevada, Kogis, Wiwas, Arhuacos, and Ken Farmers. We are a very peaceful and spiritual community. We take care of Mother Nature in Sierra Nevada that for us represents the heart and the lungs of the world. Eh, en las culturas solo se diferencia el dominio de la lengua. Good day. Actually, good evening. We're actually, uh, <laughs> this is wrapping up day three. We forgot to do it last night because yeah. why? Because last night was so mystical and magical that we, and we were so exhausted that we actually passed out pretty hard last night. Yeah, yeah. We sat around a campfire with uh, one of the Kogi guys and he was explaining a little bit of the Kogi history and uh, it was a really, really cool experience just yeah. to hear where they're coming from and the message that they have yeah. to spread across to all the people who are traveling through Ciudad Perdida. Yeah, it was really cool and we got to ask questions and then afterwards we sat with Maria, uh, the gal who is translating for the Kogi guy um, because she's been spending the past year with the tribe and she's learned a lot about them, their traditions, their beliefs, how we're impacting the world mm -hmm. and how they have seen it firsthand in the jungle here in Sierra Nevada. So. It was pretty incredible to get that kind of information. And I think that my biggest takeaway from it was we all need to understand the impact that we have on this earth because we're making a dent on it. Yeah, we are. And I think my biggest takeaway was that they were able to see that, you know, global warming is happening. They're able to see <laughs> that things are changing because of the receding snow up in the Sierra Nevada mountains. And that's interesting to me because they're not connected to social media or media in general to tell them, you know, hey, you know, these scientific experiments have been showing that ice is receding. They're viewing it with their eyes and they actually have uh you know some of the was it shamans yes. or yeah living up in that sector up higher up in, in the, the mountains, snowy mountains so that they can monitor the condition yes. and they're seeing the change in the animals and in all the plant life and mm -hmm. the growing cycles so it's it's interesting to see mm -hmm. that they've got that much foresight yeah i could talk about this for hours but this is the end of day three video and this is it and we actually need to get hiking we have a six hour or hike or something like that ahead of us. Yeah, so we're gonna wrap up day three right now. See you at day four. Hey, welcome to day four. No, we gotta do a subscribe. Oh yeah, we do. <laughs> that was funny though. That was kind of funny. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't yet, go ahead, click subscribe and hit that bell so you can be notified every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday that we come out with fresh videos just for you. Yeah, that's right. Until next time, friends. Adventure on. Adventure on. Bye. I know that guy. Yeah, yeah. We've gone on a couple trips together, if you will. We're vacation buddies. Yeah. We, this this vacation's been almost two years long. <laughs> <laughs>